everyone, it's Jacqueline and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanted to film the YouTube made me buy it tag video. At least I think it's a tag video. Anyways, you basically talk about a bunch of products that you bought just because of YouTube because a lot of people talk about them and they hype them up online, things like that. So I have a bunch of products here and a lot of these are products that are like original, like 2010 YouTube beauty community kind of products. So these are pretty old school, but I think we might as well hop on into it. I feel like it wouldn't be right if I didn't start my video with this product and this is the Urban Decay Primer Potion. Now back in the day, everyone and their mother was talking about this. It was either this one or the Too Faced Shadow Insurance and everyone used that in every single tutorial and we were, like the whole YouTube beauty community was obsessed with eyeshadow primers. Now I had discovered all these videos and I had really no knowledge about makeup and I was like, why do you need a primer? Like I don't get it, what's an eyeshadow primer? I had no idea. Um, anyways, I thought they were super cool and they sounded awesome so I went up to the store and I bought one. This obviously is not the original tube, but YouTube definitely taught me everything about eyeshadow primers and I would not have bought this without YouTube. So once I discovered how awesome eyeshadow primers were, I discovered face primers and everyone was talking about this one. This is the Benefit Professional, at least everyone that I watch. I feel like this was the only face primer that existed for like a hot minute on YouTube. So I went to the store and I bought it and I thought it was so cool because this is very silicone-y so it feels very like silky in your hands. So I thought it made my skin feel so magical and amazing. So I really loved it at the time. I wouldn't repurchase now because I have a way, like I have so many other um, primers that I love. But this definitely got me into the whole world of face primers. Next up, I'm gonna move on to a brand that I used to think was so cool. This is before I even like would buy makeup or own anything. I would just watch all these videos and try to like learn about them. And I would like write lists down of like what I wanted to buy even though I like never had any intentions of going out and buying it. Anyways, that's a whole other story. Um, I heard everyone on YouTube talking about NARS and I had no idea what it was. I really didn't even know about like Sephora or like where you even bought all these makeup products from. Um, but I heard everyone talking about NARS Laguna bronzer. And I told myself whenever I was gonna buy a bronzer, I was gonna buy this one. And that's actually what I did when I eventually started to actually buy makeup and start wearing it. This was the first bronzer that I bought and I absolutely fell in love with it. I thought it was so beautiful. I love the packaging of it. It was like one of my first like high-end makeup purchases and I was just so in love with it. And honestly, it's still a very good bronzer. Like I use it a bunch still. Um, I definitely have a couple other ones that I like to use as well, but it definitely is worth the hype and I would not have even known this brand or Sephora or any of that stuff existed without YouTube. So thanks for that. And now I think at about the same time that NARS Laguna bronzer was super popular, so was this blush. Now this is the ever so famous NARS Orgasm blush and everyone talks about it and everyone says it's their favorite blush and that you need it in your life and everyone just goes on and on about this blush so I was so excited to pick it up and I think I used it once and I decided that I hated it and I honestly never reached for it. This was such a disappointing product that was so so overhyped and I definitely would not have known this existed without YouTube and I kind of wish I didn't. I'm just saying. Okay, I still have two more NARS products here. I feel like YouTube was definitely obsessed with NARS for like a good year on YouTube. This is the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. Now, I talked about this recently in my yearly favorites video where I said that this is my favorite foundation of the year. Um, everyone used to talk about this, maybe like in 2012, like everyone talked about this. Um, whereas I don't really hear people talk about this as much, but this still is like one of my favorite foundations. It's so beautiful, um, it's really buildable. It's what I'm wearing today on my skin actually. Um, but I'm so glad that I discovered this from all of you YouTubers we're talking about it because now this is one of my favorite foundations so I would definitely recommend this and it's definitely worth all the hype that used to be around this product okay and then the final NARS product that I have here that I would not have known existed without YouTube is the NARS creamy concealer now I feel like I definitely am one of those people that hypes this product up like I contribute to it but it is for a good reason this is the best spot concealer out there it is so amazing and everyone used to use NARS creamy concealer and custard so I went out and bought it of course even though it was definitely a little too dark for me at the time but everyone had it so I needed to have it and it still holds true to be one of the best concealers of all time I will put that out there there. Okay, the next batch of products that I'm going to move on to are all from the same brand. Now this is just a brand in general that was so hyped up on YouTube and I feel like people really only ever talked about this brand. And now there's a lot more diversity, there's a lot of other brands people talk about. But there was definitely one point on YouTube, and comment down below if you remember this, where all anyone ever talked about was MAC products. It was MAC this, MAC collections, MAC everything. This was actually one of my first MAC purchases, and this is actually the original one. This is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in the shade Medium Dark. Now everyone used to talk about these mineralized skin finishes like so, so much. Whether it be the natural ones that are like face powders or just the skin finishes that are like highlighters, these were so popular and there was such a big like obsessive following of like collecting a bunch of different limited edition ones and 
just these were such a thing for a while and honestly the product is pretty good like this was my first I think one of my first face powders when I was younger um, and I used to just wear it on its own and it was very it was a really good like beginner product I think because it wasn't too full coverage so it was very natural looking but I rarely ever reach for this product anymore but there was a time when this was the only thing that people talked about. Next up, I have a MAC paint pot here. Now again, these used to be such like a thing on YouTube. Everyone wanted to collect every single color. So I have soft ochre here, but I feel like the top three most popular colors were soft ochre, um, painterly paint pot, and rubenesque paint pot. And I remember I wanted rubenesque so badly, but I could only save up to buy this one. Um, and this honestly, it still is a fairly good product. Like it's a decent product. It really is good at canceling out your veins and just really starting with a blank canvas canvas. Um, these do dry out pretty quickly though and they can be a bit drying and like get like a bit like sticky on the eye so I don't necessarily like reach for these every day but they're not a bad product but definitely not worth all the hype that used to be around these products like they're not that good guys. Next up, MAC eyeshadow palettes. I think it might have just been like a personal obsession, but I used to love watching people like go through their MAC eyeshadow collections, and people would have like six, seven filled MAC palettes, like all color coded, and it was such a thing. And like depotting your eyeshadows like at home, like over top of a candle. I used to do that. If you guys know what I'm talking about, let me know. Anyways, MAC palettes and MAC eyeshadows were all of the rage. They were really the only brand that did a bunch of colored eyeshadows. I think at the time, like I didn't know any other brand existed really for like single eyeshadows and to build your own palettes. But um, I have quite the palette here. These actually aren't all MAC shadows, about half of them are. Um, but yeah, that was such a thing and I used to get so excited and like obsessed over MAC eyeshadows. Personally, I think you can get a ton of eyeshadows a lot cheaper that are just as good if not better quality, so I would save your money on those. The next overhype products that I have here are MAC lipsticks. Now MAC lipsticks definitely aren't bad by any means, but again, they were just so hyped up. I was so obsessed with MAC lipsticks that I got to the point where I could name you every single color like in the collection and all their limited edition colors, and I could tell like if someone was wearing a lipstick, I could be like, oh, that's MAC Russian Red, or oh, that's MAC Angel. Like, I was that obsessed with them. And I feel like the whole internet was obsessed with MAC Angel, um, MAC Hue, or there was one really pale nude one. Oh my gosh, what is it called? Now I'm blanking. I forget all of them. Um, but yeah, MAC Angel used to be so popular because it was Kim Kardashian's favorite color or supposedly, I don't even know. Um, so everyone used to always talk about that. I've got MAC Hue here, which was my favorite. Um, very similar to MAC Angel. Mac Angle, <laughs> Mac Angel, just not as frosty. So yeah, this was just my absolute favorite and I thought it was so beautiful on me, even though it is so pale for me. Like it looks, it looks way too, way too light for me. But I loved it at the time. Now more recently, I feel like for a while, Velvet Teddy was a super popular matte color. It's just a very gorgeous kind of brown, wearable, matte finish lipstick. And I feel like it was kind of a thing because the whole like Kylie Jenner lip thing happened in what, 2012, 2013. So everyone was like buying this color. It was like a Kardashian favorite again. Um, anyways, it is a nice color, but it's not anything super unique. Like, you can definitely find dupes. But yeah, that was definitely a more recent overhyped MAC product. Now sticking to the whole Kylie Jenner lip thing, when everyone was trying to figure out what lip liner she was wearing, she used to say it was either MAC Whirl or MAC Soar, so those colors were always sold out at MAC, and I ended up finding a way to get my hands on one. This one is here in the shade Soar, and I honestly, I don't even really like it. Like I wore it a few times when I bought it, but this is still the original one I bought, and it's still pretty like unused. Um, I think I just bought it because there was just so much hype, and everyone was saying it was like the lip color, the lip liner to get. So I ended up picking it up, but I rarely use it. I don't find the formula that good. But MAC Lip Liners definitely is an overhyped thing from MAC. Okay, my last two things from MAC. Again, this is more back in like the original 2011 YouTube kind of days. Everyone always used to talk about MAC brushes. So I have the MAC 239 brush and the MAC 217. And these were just such an essential in like every single tutorial. Everyone had this to pack on their shadow. Everyone had this to kind of blend out in the crease. And they were just so, so popular. And um, honestly, these are really good brushes. I do really like them and I use them all the time. So it definitely is worth all the hype. But I feel like now there are so many other brands that do brushes that like back in the day it was only MAC really that did brushes. MAC and like Sigma was popular but 
Now there are so many different places you can buy brushes that you don't need to buy these ones, but if you do buy them, they're not bad by any means. Um, but definitely, they're not as popular anymore as they used to be, but I would not have bought these without YouTube and YouTubers talking about them. Next up, did you think I could do a video without talking about the Urban Decay Naked palettes? Like, no, that's not gonna happen. I think the one that takes the cake, like the number one most overhyped, talked about product on YouTube that I would not have bought without YouTube is Urban Decay Naked Palette, the original. Now this is a very beloved palette to me. It was my first eyeshadow palette I ever really bought. It was so beautiful. I was just so excited to own this because everyone talked about it. And believe it or not, this is my original palette. It has no, like it hasn't hit pan on any of the colors. They're all in very good condition. I like took so much care of this. Um, and this is still one of my favorite and most used eyeshadow palettes today. I mean, it definitely isn't as loved as I used to use it because I'm not really big into eyeshadow anymore, but um, this still is a great palette. I think it's, it's definitely worth the hype. After I fell in love with the original, I ended up buying the Naked 3 because when this came out, again, everyone was talking about it, so I thought that I needed it. And I actually don't like this palette at all. I've talked about this in the past, but I don't know if mine's a dud or what's wrong with it. It's not pigmented, and I just I don't like it at all. So this one I would not recommend you to buy, but the original, I'd say go for it. And then the final palette that I have here is the Naked 2. Mine is all decked out and like personalized, which is super cool. This I actually didn't purchase this one. This was given to me by Urban Decay, which was super sweet. Um, but this Naked 2 palette is definitely good if you are more on the cool side. The quality of the shadows is still really nice. Way better than the 3. I don't know what went wrong with the 3, but... The Urban Decay Naked Palettes in general were just so talked about. I feel like every makeup lover needs to at least own one. Or try one out. Next up, when Instagram brows became a thing, so did the hype for the Anastasia Dip Brow. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone claimed that it made their eyebrows amazing and that you needed it. So of course, I went out to the store and I finally bought it for myself. And it's not that it's a bad product, but it's definitely not an essential for me. I mean, it might just be because I do have fairly full brows on my own and I don't even like the look of Instagram brows, so I don't know what I was trying to achieve like with using this. Um, but it definitely is a decent product. Definitely not an essential, but definitely hyped up on YouTube and I would not have bought it without everyone raving about it. Next up, I have the ever so famous Chanel Soleil de Tan. Soleil Tan de Chanel? Soleil Tan de Chanel, that's what it's called. It's a giant cream bronzer from Chanel. And back in the day, I didn't even know that luxury brands did makeup. Like, I didn't know that Chanel did makeup, that Tom Ford, that Burberry. Like, I didn't know any of these brands made makeup. So when I heard everyone hyping it up and raving about this cream bronzer, I was like, I need this in my life. And I remember feeling so fancy, like, going to, like, the Chanel counter, super bougie, buying, like, Chanel cream bronzer. I was so excited and this was like my most cher most most cherished can I speak? This was my most cherished cream bronzer or makeup product in general. And I just love this like sitting out on my little like desk because I thought it was so fancy, my Chanel. Um, anyways, this product is definitely good and I still do use it a ton because I really do love cream products. Is it worth the price tag? No, I don't think you need this. Um, you can definitely create looks very similar by not using this product, but I mean, if you do want a nice little luxury purchase, it is nice and it is a good product, but I definitely would not have known this existed without YouTube. Okay, and last but not least, the final product that I would not have known existed without YouTube is the Shu Yumera Eyelash Curler. Now this is probably my third or fourth eyelash curler from Shu, and everyone used to rave about this. Like, this was the only eyelash curler that existed and everyone needed to use it. Um, I remember watching all these videos of all these beauty gurus using this, and I had like a $2 Quo eyelash curler that I thought was amazing. And everyone was like, you need this, you need this, you need this. So I remember it's like, what, maybe like $25? So I was like, this is a big purchase. So I remember buying my first Shi Yumera eyelash curler and I thought it was so life changing. And I was like, this is the, this is the one. Um, in hindsight, I don't think it's that different than any other eyelash curler. And I don't know if you need to spend $25 on this. I kind of feel like all eyelash curlers do the same thing. They just kind of clamp and bend your lashes. Um, I mean, it kind of depends, I guess, on your eye shape if they fit in this, like, in the curvature of this eyelash curler. Um, I personally find half lash curlers to do a really good job on my eye shape. Um, they're, like, literally half the size. Let me see. Do I have one here? I have this little baby curler here. This one's from MAC. It's literally half the size of a regular eyelash curler. But sometimes I find curlers like this work a bit better on my eye shape just because my eyes are slightly hooded. So it doesn't pinch or like get caught. It curls very easily. Um, so yeah, the Shu Yumera, it's good. Was it worth the hype? I don't think so, but I'm glad I tried it out.
Okay, so that's it. Those are all the products that I discovered because of YouTube and some products that were overhyped. Let me know down in the comments which products you feel like are talked about all the time on YouTube that don't live up to the hype or do live up to the hype. I would love to hear your thoughts. Anyways, make sure you guys subscribe if you're not subscribed already and make sure you turn the post notifications on because I'm posting videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. So lots of new videos. Thanks you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye! cheeks okay you know what it just hit me if I'm gonna be this bronzy and this beachy I need some fake freckles I'll be right back